the IDT Hangout. Um, we haven't had one for a bit, but this is the first of the last, um, well, one we'll have each week for the rest of the semester. We'll have a bunch of students do um, their thesis projects um, towards the end of the semester, and we'll spend um, the next couple of weeks talking IDT things, um, starting this week with our schedules for the fall and spring. I'm sorry, for the summer and fall. Um, so let's go around and do a, a quick round of introductions. Uh, some people we've met, I'm not sure I know everybody, and uh, lots of no video, so that's fine too. Video about people. Um, I'm Steve Snyder. I think I, I'm not sure I know everybody. We'll see who Hannah is, we'll see who Fiona is. Um, I think I know everybody else, and I'm the IDT coordinator. Um, so whenever you have questions, you ask me. So to my left, and I've discovered this technique in my IDT class, in my um, Zoom classes. The way you figure out if everybody's here and if it, if it works for everybody is you just go around the horn and you have each person introduce themselves and call on someone else. And then that way we test every single mic. So, and it also demonstrates that everybody's screen is a little different. So um, my favorite is to go to, um, not speaker view, but gallery view, so everybody's got a small little picture. And I'll say to my left, I see Silvana. And then Silvana opens her mic and says, oh, down below me, I see whomever she sees. Hi, Silvana. How are you doing? Can you hear me okay? We can. You can just call on someone else, and then you'll know if they, if they speak that you work, your mic works. All right. Ibrahim? Hello, everyone. Um, and below me, I see James Ward. Hello, I'm James. Um, next is Russell. Oh, hey folks, yeah, this is uh, Russ Kahn, I'm a professor in the program. Hi everybody. I but he missed it, Russ. No, you have to call on somebody, Russ. That's you oh, hand the baton. Oh, no, I was listening, but I'm only going left or right. I don't see the view. Anyone who hasn't spoken yet, Russ. Oh, it's sorry, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. There you go, thank you. <laughs> Since Russ said my name, I'll go and bug everyone. And below me is James, but he already went, so below him is Catherine. Hi, Doug. How you doing? Hi, everybody. Hello. I just realized I'm in my son's room right now, and I just realized what the background was. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. And Catherine, just to conclude, you say hello to Fiona then. Hi, Fiona. Hello, my name is Fiona, and uh, I'm currently taking social information theory. Good. Hi, Fiona. So, yeah. See, that worked. Um, in my intro American politics class, which now what is this, like the ninth week of the semester? They almost have it. And we start, because I teach on Zoom, and we go around the horn, and they, like, last time, we, everybody except for the last person didn't get it. So it's like, oh, maybe one And it's a good technique, I think, in Zoom, because it forces everybody into the conversation, and it kind of, like, at least makes sure that all the mics work. Um, is that my mic that's causing those issues? Anyway. I believe there's a, it's Silvana's mic. It's Silvana's, okay. It's, it's anyway. my, what do I need to do? Um, you can mute and then push to talk. Just mute and the, yeah. I only use Zoom a couple times, so I'm kind of, yep. It's, it's pretty good. Sometimes some people's setups are a little worse than others and they get more echo. So I just mute the mic? Yep, just mute your mic. There you go. Oh, it's not, it is me. No, it's not. Okay. And then when you want to talk to Lana, you have to push unmute. So, um, hello, everybody. Did you, I, I know I had advertised that we were going to review the schedules. And if that's of particular interest to anyone here, we're more than, ha I'm more than happy to do that. And um, we certainly want to do that because most of our vast listening and viewing audience watches the, the video. They're not here for the live conversation. So our, our millions of hits, you know, we have to do that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I came down with the plague, <laughs> and so I was wondering if I could go first. I'm not feeling very well, and I just have one class to discuss. Um, is that okay? No. I know it gets out of order. I know. No. I, I, no. <laughs> All right. So for Catherine. Yes. Okay. I, I, of course it's okay. And I'll tell you why. Because James is a virtuoso at recording um, Zoom sessions, serving them on YouTube, and building links to specific portions of the Zoom session with start and stop parameters, so the order in which we actually make it is less important than it used to be. 
Okay. All of that just went right past you, didn't it? No, that didn't go past me. I'm just looking for my write-up of the yeah. course. Okay. So what I'll do here, hi, Jared, how you doing? Jared, you just joined us. I'm just saying hello. Oh, how's it going? I just fixed my audio, so. <laughs> yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my desktop. Um, and I apologize. These are not live on the web. And it's my fault because I didn't start doing it until today when the schedule goes live. But as soon as I did, of course, the schedule, the system that we have for saving web pages doesn't work. So the best I could do at the moment was to print them through Gmail because I couldn't get them to so that's why it looks pretty weird, but they're almost live. Okay. Um, on the left is my summer schedule and on the right is my fall schedule. I hope that that's clear from my beautiful graphics, um, which are taken of course from Google images using, um, fall or summer as a search term and um, only selecting images that are licensed, commercial, re, you know, whatever the most open license is. So because of Catherine, we're gonna go first. <laughs> so this is the fall. Um, and so what I try to do is we'll just step through each of the fall courses that we're offering, um, talk a little bit about them, and um, this website is going to change dramatically because Catherine or whomever teaches that course, right now Catherine, um, is going to give us something other than a course description that we'll replace this content with soon. Um, but in the meantime, it's course description. So go ahead, tell us about the research methods class, Catherine, besides it being a core and required for all. Right, so is anyone thinking of taking it? I don't want to tell, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Some people. Yes, we have a vast audience, most of which are not here. <laughs> okay. okay, so the research methods course um, is designed to help you become familiar with the broad range of possibilities there might be for you to do uh, your thesis or your project. They might be able to assist you. Um, we want you to know the difference between qualitative and quantitative methods and get a sense of how people use them and write about them. And um, the course is going through a bit of a transition as we move toward project-based um, thesis projects. And we're still, um, I guess working out exactly how we can be most helpful. So the way I've been doing that in the last few years is making them um, pretty individualized. So if students come into the course and they have a lot of experience with qualitative methods already, they have an option of taking a test <laughs> and opting out of some of the activities that the other students do in exchange for doing some other kind of project. Um, and I would say maybe three or four students out of 25 um, take that option. Most folks just go right ahead through the system. And I try to choose examples that I, you might find interesting. And then the, um, the project is very, very um, broadly defined. And I help you along the way to try to make it so that the project they use in this class it can be used for your thesis in the future. Um, so, yeah, that's the class. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I'm a little feverish, so if I repeat things, <laughs> no, um, I'm, not, I'm not myself today. Right. And, and so that is, again, that's a core course. That's, so everyone needs to take that at some point. Um, and I think in terms of when in your program you should take that, um, it's offered every fall. Um, and so you don't have to worry about it that way. But you do want to... I think you want to take it a little closer. To, I, ideally, it's in the fall of your thesis year when you finish your thesis or project in the spring. Um, so that's ideal. Um, and if you think that there's a better research methods class for you, um, you know, if you want to do a particular type of method, if um, I, I was talking to someone today who wants to do some higher end analytics, um, we have we can substitute. A qualitative research course, a statistics analysis course, or you know, we can certainly talk with you if you wanted to do. Um, business school has certain methods that we might um, methods courses that we might accept. So we're open to that. Um, computer science, sociology. There's a variety of courses that fill this that can fill this requirement, and, and we're certainly open to that if, if you want to explore that. So, thanks, Catherine. Be well. You're so welcome. Thank you so much. I um, would love to say, but I just can't tonight. So. Well, I don't want, I don't, we don't want anyone to get sick either. So we know how the virus <laughs> spreads. Yeah, that's how my date's been. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. Good luck with registration and call me if you have more questions about it. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Cool. So, Ross, you're teaching information design, another core course um, in the fall. Russ? Did I lose the whole crowd? Yeah, I was mute. I had muted myself, so I had okay. to hold and do that. Um, can I share my screen? With, is that uh, can you unshare yours and I'll share? I think I can. I don't think you. I see share screen on the bottom of mine. There you go. Okay. So just take a second, but this way I can show people the actual course Firefox. There it is. Okay. Are you? Yep, no, we got it. Okay. So um, this is IDT 534. I'm teaching two classes in the uh, fall. Um, one is a core class, and everyone should take it if they need it, because core classes are only offered once every three semesters, and then we rotate through. There's three core classes. So um, you do want to take that if you haven't taken it yet. And, uh, and we'll probably get um, a lot more interest in new, you know, incoming students. But still, if you haven't taken it, you haven't. You're only in your third semester here. You want to take it. But this is a sense of how it goes. It's it's fairly focused on uh, graphic arts. That is the different, uh, you know, typography, uh, design and layout, and particularly the different graphic uh, design schools over the years. Uh, beginning in the 19, well, 1890s, which is a loosely track. And so we go through the history of graphic design, and then we uh, go through uh, everyone, actually. We use our, the, uh, the uh, principles of graphic design, and we also use the practices of looking. To, uh, look and you co-teach this with Michelle, right? Yes, yeah, we end up with a... Usually, it's a visualization project. Uh, Michelle, uh, Professor Salmon teaches the second half of the semester, and that's a little more focused on actual tools and design. And the first half I teach, and it's more on theory, what graphic arts is and how it's been used in the past. So uh, we sort of go into how to do the work, and then Michelle takes over, uh, Professor Salmon takes over, and focuses on some actual projects uh, that students create. Um, actually, if I can raise this up, you can sort of see that uh, <clears throat> the first half is all theory, then the students present about different components of graphic arts, <clears throat> and then um, there's actually a, a final pro project in which students create an infographic. <clears throat> and that's that's pretty much the right. Thanks. One thing you might want to so Ross, we we, we caught you on your week one, um, and we know that it's been a few semesters since we made the transition from Angel to Blackboard, but it looks like you haven't taught this course since then. <coughs> that's right. Yeah. This so you might have to revise your week one. Right. Right. Yeah. There's always a uh, scrubbing we have to do at the beginning. Yeah. So thank you, Ross. So that's the so that's the information design, and then I'll be teaching the thesis class. Any of you who are moving towards thesis or project semester, you want to chat with me um, well before the semester begins um, about how to organize your work for that class. And then so um, let me just step to the fall electives since we did the fall first, we'll come back and do the summer. Um, and so we've got three electives at the moment scheduled for fall. They're depending on enrollments, so there might be a fourth, but right now we've got the three. Um, and we're also teaching online learning. Um, and he'll talk about that. I'll talk about the topics course in digital literature and Ryan, if Ryan's here, he can talk about his topics course in visual thinking. Um, so Russ, you want to talk a little bit about online learning? It's the first yeah, as long as I've got my screen in front of okay, you, yep. um, I'll go through this. And this is actually designing an online class. It's, uh, okay. you know, using different tools. First of all, going through online learning and, and also the concept of learning and Bloom's taxonomy and the whole idea of how people learn, behavioral, constructivist, and uh, cognitive learning skills. You know, again, we start with the theory and then students do a, a little lit review on a particular 
method of learning, and then we um, um, we break it up into different types of uh, tools for learning. So in the last semester, and this could change depending on you know what we see as as what's growing. We may actually do something more on virtual reality or augmented reality because I know that's a growth area. <clears throat> but in the past, you can see we focused on MOOCs, social media. And these are basically using these tools for enhancing the learning environment, the online learning environment. Open textbooks, wearable technologies, and then we do a final project in which students basically have to show sort of an understanding of all the different tools and actually put together uh, a class using uh, these different tools. So the idea. When you say put together a class, do you mean a, a class session or do you mean a whole course? What I mean, in terms of the final final project? Yes. The the final project is a is after students have learned all these tools, they they think about how they may use them in a particular class, and so they come up with a set of learning, uh, basically what's a learning space and what how they might use different tools. Um, such as wearable technologies, like how you would have students, say, in an architecture class, be able to walk around and actually look at architecture and perhaps mm -hmm. use that as part of the learning space in a class. Okay. So it's uh, sort of learning the tools and then putting together a class. And that's pretty much how it goes. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so then the other two electives offered in the fall, um, one is being taught by Professor Catherine Evans, who is a um, relatively new member of the faculty, um, teaches primarily literature faculty. Um, and so this is her first um, uh, join, the first time that she's going to join the IDT faculty. Um, and she is, um, I assure her, I should share the message with you that that she, can, she doesn't know a whole lot about digital literature. She knows a whole lot about literature and is going to run the class as a <clears throat> in our community-based kind of learning experience. And she works with everybody who's enrolled in the class to understand. And knowing, knowing Katie, she'll know a lot more by the time she teaches this class. But you know how we produce the stupid and analyze literature. Um, and so it's all going to be focused as a, an enormous body of digital literature that she's been introduced to the program. So. Um, and if the course works out and she enjoys teaching it and learning from it and students seem to enjoy it, then we'll make it part of our regular course. But it just seemed like an opportune moment to, to offer that course to our students. And then Ryan Professor Lazardi is going to teach a seminar on visual thinking, um, which is an extension of the ideas I think that he and Russ cover in information theory. And then it's mostly about thinking, not in terms of words, but in terms of Pictures, graphics, visuals, videos, etc., um, and how to put together those visual ideas and effective um, communicative experiences. Um, I probably didn't do his course justice, but Steve, do you want to take, Steve, I don't know if you want to take over the screen and just yeah, sort of stop your share. Man. Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, you got to stop your share. How do I do that? Actually? Click on the red button that says stop share. Um, James can kick you off too, because he's the host, I believe. James, you want to use that for us? Doesn't give me that option when I click that. Okay. Russ, there's a, a, up at the top bar, it says stop share. Let's see the top bar. Let me get rid of the, oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Yep. So yeah, so the um, additional two electives that we talked about were digital, digital literature and visual thinking. Um, so over on the fall, um, um, I'll be running a special thesis project class for anyone who's interested. And then um, Eve is teaching his seminar on gamification, and then I'll do my seminar on emerging technologies. Eve, do you want to talk about the gamification class? Uh, sure. Um, and. Um, I believe my gamification class is being offered in the summer, correct? Yes, Nothing this is all. summer. Yep. Can't you okay. tell from the pictures that it's summer? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks. So, 
Uh, they could be a little bit larger than thumbnails. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Um, so gamification is the use of design um, philosophy and um, frameworks from the video game industry in serious applications, be it um, health, education, or just a non-entertainment um, form. And in this course, we basically go over the literature of gamification. So we um, cover some basic game theory. Um, we read both Ralph Koyster's Theory of Fun and Jane Paul's Gee's um, What Games Have to Teach Us About Literacy and, or Reading and Literacy. And we then um, have presentations from the um, from those in the course about what the current edge is in gamification and end with uh, making our own gamifications, um, our own projects. So uh, things that are probably going to change in the course, um, right now the new big thing in gamification is virtual reality. Um, I'm hoping to have a couple virtual reality headsets for anyone who's in the Utica area to experiment with. And there's a lot of talk about what they can do for education. So we'll probably be talking about that. Um, we will also be, you know, hopefully I would like to incorporate Zoom more in the class so we have more face-to-face -face and um, basically treat it like a true seminar, get people um, talking to each other and discussing the literature. Thanks. Um, and then I just noticed that I'm missing a summer course, so I'll add that in my description as well. Um, so the seminar on emerging technologies, IDT 585, is a course I've talked before. And what I'll do with that course, I usually we pick um, four topics based on the interests of the students who are enrolled at the class, and we go through a process of building a project. Um, my guess is, given where I've been thinking lately, it will probably be a wiki. And we'll use, I don't think we'll use TiddlyWiki, we may, but probably use something like MediaWiki. And so we'll collaboratively build a project that takes a look at some emerging technologies. Um, I'm thinking that that's the course description, but I'm, I'm much broader than that. We're probably going to end up looking at robotics, um, artificial intelligence, um, and maybe the virtual reality stuff that Eve's covering in his gamification class, but I'll make sure we don't overlap too much. Um, or maybe something more political. We might do something on data analytics and their role in shaping marketing. And so it's a little fuzzy is what exactly we're going to cover, but it kind of depends on the interests of the students in the class. Um, and then we build something, an information product that talks about that. Um, like I said, either wiki or website or, or or, or a series of videos or something that we'll, we'll build based on, again, the interests of the students in the class. And then the other one that I run is, um, I think it's IDT 535 maybe. It's called um, Projects in, Projects in Digital Media. And it's a course that you can, um, students can pursue whatever projects they're interested in. We can pre-negotiate them, or I have a basket of projects that I'm looking for people to sign up for and do. Um, involving making websites, building wikis, um, a whole series of projects you can work. And sometimes people work in teams, sometimes people work as one group. Again, it depends on the interests of those who show up in the class. Um, so we kind of spend the first couple of days in the summer in the projects class, getting to know each other, figuring out what everybody's interested in doing, and then moving on from there. Um, so those are the summer offerings. Um, and if there's other courses that you're finding that are missing, please do let us know. Um, so um, again, and I will share that information with everyone um, more broadly as it comes along. So um, hope that gives you a sense of our summer classes. So James, when you build the links for this video, you'll stop the discussion about the class there, and then the rest of it will start moving forward. So, um, so um, hello, Kathy. We haven't said hello to you before. Hello, Sue. We've got alumni here. Nice to see you. Um, and um, Doug? Faculty and alumni, um, nice to see you too. So, um, so you guys um, have topics that you want to chat about other than the schedule, or are you going to rely on me to, to to provide the agenda? I mean, I've got one, but I but you probably have things on your mind too. So, what, so what's going on? 
So I was just, as you were talking about what you're going to do in that course, there can there be great new topics on, you know, analytics and effectiveness of learning. So yeah. learning analytics and the various student success tools out there. I think that could be a fun course. Mm -hmm. um, keeping all the analysis done from an academic setting. That's an idea, yeah. So certainly we've got the, yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. So Doug, it doesn't look like you're, are you still at work, Doug? No, that's, that's the office in our, in our house. Oh, okay, um, good. As Jared may know, this is where I do most of my Zoom sessions from, uh, for the web design course. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> so Jared, how are you doing? Doing very good. How about yourself? Very well. What's on your mind these days? Uh, well, I mean, uh, right now I'm just working on a bunch of, uh, I'm actually at the office right now doing some, some video work for a project I'm working on for, for work. But, okay. um, but I, I, I guess one question I, I might have, I'm still working on, because right now I'm, I'm going to be doubling up on classes in the fall, research methods and an elective, and then doing the thesis in the uh, spring, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was wondering how how far out would you recommend if we had an idea for a thesis? How far would out would you recommend maybe reaching out and and starting to talk about it? Um, as soon as you have an idea, the bubble of an, the little kernel of an idea, you can reach out and chat with people. Um, okay. Never too early, um, because I think that once you start thinking, so it's going to change a lot. But what it does is just having that conversation, um, especially you know if you, if you're taking my class then we should talk about it. Or if you're taking Russ's class, chat about it with Russ because it might help guide some of the work that you do. And then the idea is trying to get the work that you do in your various classes to contribute and to sort of, sort of focus. Some students are interested in the broadest possible experience and that's another approach to doing a master's degree. But if you're looking to sort of, to, to you know, it, it depends on what you've got running, you know, what how important that final project is to you. If it's, you know, if it's, if it's your magnum opus, you know, and it's, it's it, then then let's spend a lot of time getting there. If it's yeah. you know, if it's something you're going to spend six, and there's nothing wrong with that approach. But if it's something you're going to do start to finish in six weeks, then you know, and it doesn't matter. It's just like it's a it's a means to an end, and the end is a degree. Then then that's a different approach. And, and you know, and I have no both. You know, both. I'm a magnum opus kind of person, but. You know, I spend my time now as a faculty advisor saying, no, 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 cut that out, cut that out, cut that out, get it done, done is good. Right. You know, so, but if you got an idea, so what are you thinking about? Well, I was, um, you know, I was, I was definitely like, we were sort of talking about with virtual reality and whatnot and augmented reality, how it's sort of a hot topic at the moment. But yes. I was trying to think about either using one or both in, um, higher education marketing so it's mm -hmm. basically sort of I mean that's what I'm doing right now so I was just trying to figure out if there is a way to use one or both of those to um, maybe I guess I could either I could either I was thinking of using it either on the marketing side or even in, including virtual reality in um, the academic side of things as well so that's what I'm sort of toying around with I don't know um, if one would be, um, well, you've got the two people sitting to your right, at least on my screen, Russ and Eve, who are perfectly well positioned to, yeah. I mean, they're, they're the resources and they've got, and so that would be great. Um, Perfect. I'd love to work with you, so I'm not quite sure that I want to, you know, see you move away, but I mean, those are, that would be a perfect blend between Russ and, and uh, Eve. Okay. All right. I just add a couple of things, Jared. I know Steve's going to later have students talk about their thesis projects, yeah. and later hangouts. It's a really good opportunity to get a sense of the scope and depth of projects that generally work for the thesis. <clears throat> and I often find students can chime in and give you uh, feedback because they've been working on a thesis in terms of what you might want to, you know, how you may want to frame it or how you may want to limit it in some way. As Steve said, the key is what I call this high-tech term called the doability uh, factor. Can it be accomplished in the set amount of time? And um, I actually heard that term for the first time when I was working on my PhD when another faculty member said, let's, you know, I'd rather go deeper than wider. So 
you really want to set your parameters, um, you know, and, and cover a few things really in depth. Um, right. Than everything. And, and as to your question about um, talking with us, better soon, like we're free to talk. So set up a time to meet up online um, by office, uh, digital office hours, and um, we can get you set on the right path of the particular authors you should be reading um, and to start your liter your path down your literature review, and um, you know trying to refine that thesis question or that, project, that question down to you know exactly what you want to research. Perfect. Yep, sounds good. I'll definitely uh, definitely reach out very soon. Yeah, and, and that so reaching out and thinking about that suggests well maybe the summer class I should do game you know if you're doing a summer class gamification is an opportunity. So Yeah I took a uh, game of that's actually where it sort of started oh, clicking okay. so I took gamification did, yeah. uh, last summer. And, and uh, if you wanted to do a pilot project, we could do something in the projects class this summer. Okay. So uh, I was going to mention gamification is a really, really big topic. I'm one of the reviewers for um, IITG grants, for the SUNY wide grants for uh, instructional design. And uh, I, I think I, see, I saw four or five projects. Um, coming into terms with a big specific area and focus on game. Yeah, it's not yeah that was my phone ringing. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, so Silvana, no, not Silvana. Fiona asked a good question about the the IDT electives. Um, there's four core courses in the program: um, research methods, the three cores, and then thesis. I should suggest the rest are all open electives. Up to two of them can be non-IDT courses without any special permission. Um, more we'd have to you know, entertain a, per, a petition. And the rest are IDT courses. So you can transfer in some courses. Um, and yes, um, as Doug says, they count. And if you didn't, then, um, well, then you didn't. I'm not sure I understood the question there. So Fiona, um, so Fiona did you have questions about stuff that's going on? Or, 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 or how is your IDT life going? Uh, no, I don't have questions about that. It's just the unrestricted elective, electives is a little bit confusing to me. Um, so I don't have any courses that I transferred from previous oh, college. Uh, yes. Do I take any of the uh, extra electives that are there? Or, uh, yeah, I can take take from any IDT course, any graduate course that's offered at SUNY Poly um, that you're qualified to take, of course. Um, you might also look at open.suny.edu. Um, there's an amazing variety of courses available. I, I, to be honest, don't know what the availability of graduate courses is, but I'm sure there's some there. Um, and you, know, you can take those courses um, and transfer them. Technically, you transfer them back in, but there's many more courses than we might see in our program. And part of the way that we try to leverage being a part of the SUNY system is to encourage you to take other SUNY courses at other campuses. Um, and so you might look around and see what's available to you in open.suny.edu. Perfect. And uh, the advisor would be you for the uh, to go? Um, Ross is the best. No, yes. Any, uh, sure. Yes. But, uh, any one of us is more than happy to talk with you. But the coordinator, usually the advising issues all come through the coordinator. So I'm more than happy to chat with you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we tend to be pretty good about accepting courses. They have to be, you know, clearly accredited graduate courses. Sometimes you'll go to a conference and they'll act like this is the equivalent of a graduate course, but we, we generally, we, we never give credit for something like that. It would have to be a regular program, and you do want to get pre-approval. Um, one reason it's there, to be honest, is we often get K through 12 teachers, and they want to take courses in their discipline, so they'll take a nice graduate level course um, in that situation, and that's why it's unrestricted, because we're pretty open about what we'll accept. <clears throat> Kathy, how are you? Kathy, I'm not sure I know who Kathy is, so she's listening. Yes. Well, Lana, I'm here. Oh, wait, Kathy's come back. I am not, I'm here. Okay. I'm navigating um, and just trying to figure out what to do um, as I go along. I've just started the master's courses, course, just taking one class right now. Okay, which one are you in? Um, I'm in the uh, information design technology. Okay. 
So that's Ralph yes. Kahn on this. Oh, information <laughs> design technology? No. Uh, no, it's it's probably that class. How's that going, Kathy? <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, it's a, a lot more work than I had anticipated when I uh, first signed up for it. Um, so scheduling my time has been really my um, most difficult thing uh, at this point. But I am uh, doing homework. <laughs> I've got a deadline tonight. It's almost done, so I anticipate getting it in on time. Yeah, I think you're on a team that's coming up, aren't you? Or something. I see yeah, you and I did turn, oh, I turned in the slide, so yeah, I'm all up on my work. It's just okay. responding to the other blocks. So, as you, so I don't know if you're thinking about summer courses, but you know, as you think about courses, you, um, you at some point you want to begin to think about where you want to go in the program, you know, yeah. and that will help guide courses and, and um, you know, so. And I find that when people reach, when students reach out and have a conversation with one of the faculty members, even if it's like 10 minute conversation, um, and best when you do it with two or three of us, because you'll get totally different answers to the same question, then the students really connect up to the program. So that investment of a half an hour of your time, yes. uh, I think is well worth it. And it's always amazing to me that, you know, how many people go through the program and never ask about anything and kind of, you know, and that's fine, that's your choice. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, if you're interested in stuff, so what do you what do you do when you're not doing IDT courses? <laughs> um, I um I teach at SUNY Oneonta with Jared. Oh, okay. So um yeah, I'm in the communication field. I'm a journalist. Oh, there's a cluster of SUNY on there, right? Yes, I think so. Ken yeah. Crosby's there. Do you know Ken? Yep. Ken's here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I know Karen uh, Munson and and Jared Stanley. Okay, yeah, so that, I know of four people, the, the four of you now. So, okay. So we've got a call. So we can go to Oneonta. We should do a hangout from Oneonta one day. Oh, my gosh, please do. <laughs> I'm having a bit of a problem with the, um, with the webinars and the Skyping. My computer's so bad that it, it glitches in and out. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Because I, I don't live very far from Oneonta, so that's fine. <laughs> that be fun. Or, you know, conversely, maybe when I um, get out of <clears throat> excuse me, my classes, I can come up there and maybe meet in person. Oh, I you can do that anytime, yeah. Okay. Sure. I, I would feel good about doing that at least once, maybe. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit more of an understanding about the campus and the courses and, and who you guys are and, and, you know, how you do it. <laughs> I, I think Sue LaPrey, who's sitting over there to my left, can testify about the value of getting in your car. Yeah. Um, Sue and I met several times, and, and James James is an undergrad, but he also hops in his car and drives out to Utica. Um, and I think it helps sometimes. So I mean, it's not required; it's, it, it just helps sometimes, you know. Um, so Von to Rochester is quite a hike, but you know, someday just maybe we'll do that. Well, we can meet in the middle, right? What's a Syracuse or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, while I have you on, I just wanted to ask a quick question. Yeah. From the last time that we did speak, um, I did started writing, so I think I have something. Um, would it be possible to probably set up a time with you? Or if yeah, you probably sent me an email, and I didn't. You, you got to keep hitting back. Um, okay. You get a response in like three days. It, it just it, All right. it's down below. Okay, um, just, yeah, just to remember. make sure I'm on the right track there. Yeah. Definitely. I don't recall exactly where you are in the process. I know that mm -hmm. yeah. we can chat about it offline. So, yeah. All right. Definitely. All right. Um, what's exciting up in Albany, Doug? Just keep it, keeping busy. Um, yeah. We've got, you know, some new initiatives in, in Open SUNY. Uh, I assume everyone's, or at least from the faculty side, has seen we are tasked with growing enrollments in SUNY by nearly 100% and our credential users, and that's been a, a big focus for us. So the things I mentioned before in response to the, the curriculum, um, you know, working on technologies to increase retention rates, working on more effective web approaches to get more students to come apply to SUNY, um, more effective conversion rates to web technology, so once they apply, or once they actually visit the website, uh, they actually go and convert and become an application. So uh, we have a goal, depending on which executive you ask, it's either for 2020 or 2025, to increase from 93,000 
credentialed learners, whether it's a certificate or a degree, to 150,000. So it's a massive. Let me do that again. So right now we have right now SUNY graduates 93,000 online students. 93,000 students, not just online. Oh, total. And and we have a goal. Depending, like I said, depending which executive you ask, whether it's for 2020 or 2025, to change that number to 150,000. So we are looking at. I thought SUNY overall had like 450,000 students. Students, but you only graduate about 25% of that okay. per year. Okay, so this is how many you graduate each year. Correct. And we want we want that to be another 60,000 either certificate, associates, bachelors, PhD, something. Correct. Some, some bit. I was going to say some piece of paper, but some bit. Some bit. And I think that's, that's the perfect lead into um, the discussions because we're talking about what is a truly credential. So whether it's um, some of the programs that allow you to do three certificates that are cumulative to be a degree, and that would actually be the ability to credential four different credentials per program. So really, really, really interesting time to be in the world of SUNY right now. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's interesting to be online too. It's like every day, it's like there's something new. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so those are, so all those SUNY initiatives are all opportunities for students interested in higher education or even K-12 education to find an angle who are searching for a thesis or a project to do, find an angle that would sort of ask a kind of question like that and then um, we get all sorts of interest from this, the Open SUNY organization in, in what we do, and we like that. So I think I just lost my connection, right? Well, we can hear you. Your face is frozen, at least for mine. There, I just came back. I lost my connection and I came back, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Everybody's standing still, so good. Um, and I think we've had everybody chat. Um, Eve, I heard something on the radio on the news this morning that maybe you could fill me in on. What was that news about Oculus Rift? Well, they started shipping. Yeah. So, um, people who... Um, if, if back in the day when they were a Kickstarter campaign, mm -hmm. everyone who participated in that first Kickstarter got one for free. So, those all got shipped today. Was that you? And no. <laughs> Uh, we participated on their website shortly after their Kickstarter. Wow. So we don't, we're not getting a free one. We are purchasing one, however, but since we ordered ours a week into their, when they started being offered, I'm not expecting the um, Sydney Poly one to arrive anytime soon. Yeah. So, um, 15 seconds. But we do have a couple of, uh, I do have news that the Microsoft HoloLens, I did get news back from Microsoft. We are in the wave one of developers for the HoloLens. So if um, hopefully we will be getting one of those very, very soon and we'll be developing augmented reality stuff with it. And is that going to require does that require presence, do you think, on the Utica site, on Utica's campus to participate in that process? Or do you think you could do um, that with a student at a distance? Probably. Well, I mean, I think um, if the student has experience in using um, Visual Studio or programming, um, there's some stuff they could probably do um, at a distance. Um, but if you actually want to use the device, I don't think they're going to let me take it off campus because it's three thousand dollars. Okay, so that's a, so that's something that this, that people would have to come on site to do. Cool. Possibly. Okay. Well, so, I mean, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of stuff yeah. you could do outside of it. But and one of the things we want to see is how well it works with people who don't have it um, in a collaborative work sort of way, a CSC right. sort of way. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the rest of us who might not exactly know why the Oculus Rift is exciting, um, can you tell me in like 15 seconds why I should be excited that the Oculus Rift is shipping? I'm not sure I can do that. 
I don't know if it's really exciting yet. Um, okay, fair enough. We still, we still don't know if it's going to be ex- um, pers- one. There's a couple of hurdles virtual reality needs to make in order to be a mainstream technology. Um, one major one is cost. Mm-hmm. The Oculus Rift is $600 Plus, you need to have a something along the lines of a two thousand dollar computer in order to power it. Yeah. And in addition to that, Thanks, to sir. get the most out of it, you would need to have something like a one to one controller. Um, which and the, the box comes in; it doesn't come with one to one controllers. It comes with a standard video game controller. So there's no sculpting in three D with it out of the box. So um, I honestly think um, I'm, I'm holding out hope for the Vive, even though it's more expensive at around $900. It, it's the entire solution in one box. It comes with the controllers. It comes with a camera for AR stuff. It's, and it's supported by the Steam platform, which I got to visit their um, headquarters um, last week in Washington, and I saw every one of their developers had – that Vive headset on their desk. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when is that coming? Um, I believe in May. Oh, okay. So we'll we'll continue to think about you know because I think there's a there's a, a group of IDT students, not a lot, um, probably fewer than five but still there's five and it might grow who actually are really interested in the gamification, the virtual reality, who want to actually work in that zone and who have the technical skills to sort of work in that. And then I think there's another five to 10 IDT students. And this is where, you know, we really have to work is how do we get the people who don't have the technical skills to ask the questions, the usability questions, the theoretical questions, the, um, policy questions, the ethical questions, how do we get them to frame and ask and answer questions around that technology, even if they don't know how to use it, but we're programming it. But they right. Can, well, I mean, that's, that's what we well, want to work with. Well, that's what you really want. You want to get different perspectives on yeah. your technology. And so um, probably one of the things that I've been experimenting recently with is Google Cardboard because it's very cheap mm-hmm. and everyone has access to it. So um, I'm, sh- I'm assuming a lot of people here have – you know, either got a Google Cardboard free from Verizon or the New York Times and started playing around with it. But I mean, a lot of people say that's not true VR, but it's it's close enough in my opinion. That's yeah, that's that's a great idea. Yeah, so we should definitely encourage people. We, we need a Google. What's it called? Google Cardboard. Yep. Cool. It's um, you could get um, for all the boys and girls that ship at sea. Um, that's an open invitation to do a Google Cardboard IDT project. Yeah, this is right here is the Viewmaster. Mm-hmm. Um, if you remember those old Viewmasters that had the disks in it. Um, but it's essentially Viewmaster teamed up with Google. And it's basically a Google Cardboard. So you just stick your phone in there and um, you can view VR. Is that, is that the one that Apple is uh, sort of selling? Mm, well, it will work with an iPhone. But it's a it's definitely um, linked with Google. It's a Google cardboard device. Um, it has a if you can if you open this thing up here, the QR code in there. Um, oh. You have to highlight that in order to make it work with the various Google cardboard apps. So um, cool. it right now it's thirty bucks. Are, yeah, thirty bucks. Um, <laughs> the uh, th- um, as Apple has not jumped into the ring yet. Um, there's rumors that they might or they m- are thinking about it, but um, if they are, they're not telling anyone. <laughs> um, so how do you make those little Viewmaster discs? Um, you don't make Viewmaster discs, actually. No, I know. What, what is it that you make? You run it on your – you run an app on your phone, right? Right. And yeah. so you can run it – there's a Google camera – that will basically um, take 360 panoramas. And I took one of Washington while I was there. Mm -hmm. Um, So now I need to figure out um, 
a easy way of publishing them. Um, Google's working with the um, actually with Mozilla in developing API standards for the internet so we can get the 3D internet in the near future. So okay. hopefully that will happen and because really I mean the web didn't take off until the web 2.0 when we started having users creating content via Facebook and other stuff but oh, okay so maybe not <laughs> but I, I well, think user, con user created content is important user-generated user content I think you're absolutely right was a was a critical turning point it was the sort of the killer app of the web after the initial flush of right killer apps of reading and computing. So yeah, you're certainly right that the sort of the, and maybe that the virtual reality stuff will be to the web what user generated content was to web 1.0. So maybe this really is sort of the next level. Well, that's the one question is, um, cool. you know, who, will, who will have the biggest content library? Yeah. And right now it's a, it's a toss up between Oculus and Steam. Yeah, so that, that's, I, I got to say, that's an entire area of the internet and digital culture that is um, a little mysterious and foreign to me. Um, and I'm just dying to have a bunch of IDT students, and undergrads as well, but IDT students especially, um, get involved in that research so I can learn about it, because that's, that's when I do stuff. <laughs> so I, I follow the students, that's why we do this job, you know. So I, I hope that people listening to this say, well, that's cool, I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to learn about it. And um, yeah, and that $30 Google Cardboard, you know, anybody who teaches sixth grade science or something like that, you know, this is, your kids will love it. <laughs> you know, so, it's, so definitely go for it. Um, hey, does anybody have other questions or, or topics they'd like to bring up? You know, if I could just mention, Steve, yes. uh, we do have an undergraduate program in game design. We're, I mean, an undergraduate track, and we will soon have a, an entire program in it. So we're really hoping um, to develop some connections between the grad program, which may be too far away to get to this rift, but could come up with concepts. Um, sort of a proof of concept uh, in their thesis projects and we could hopefully implement them or at least move towards implementation at the undergraduate level where our students are on campus and have access to all the tools. Yeah. And also just if anyone knows students interested in game design to be aware that that's a growing trend at our school and our other schools. Yeah, on the undergraduate, yeah, for sure. Undergraduate, right. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks yeah, for mentioning that, Russ. Um, Rachel, you joined us um, and I hadn't seen you come in. Did you have questions or topics that you wanted to bring up? We already went through the schedule, so you'd be able to watch that. Was there anything in particular you wanted to chat about? Um, no, not really. It was just that um, I had wondered about the summer and fall classes. Um, and I just, I came late. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I was just wondering if it'd be recorded. Yeah, they, they, it was recorded. Um, and I just threw them back up on the screen again. Um, so the summer's on the left and the fall's on the right, at least the way I'm looking at it. Um, and so the, the, thesis, the only core course in the summer is the thesis, the electives are gamification seminar, and there'll be another one that I'll add in there tomorrow. So, but, um, but you can, you'll be able to get the recording. Um, I said I shared my screen and I lied. Now I shared my screen. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Listen, everybody, thanks for joining. We've got, um, oh, I love those paintings on Rachel's wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will be, um, I'll be sharing a schedule for thesis presentations for the last couple weeks in April and, um, and some ideas for what we can chat about next week as we move forward. So thank you very much for coming, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Cool. Take care. Bye.